Uncle Podger Hangs a Picture Whenever Uncle Podger undertook a job at home, there was a lot of commotion. One day, a picture came from the frame maker. It was in the dining room, waiting to be put up on one of the walls. Aunt Maria asked, Who is going to hang the picture? Oh, you leave that to me, said Uncle Podger. None of you should worry about that. I'll put it up. Then he began. He sent the girl out for six pennyworth of nails, and then one of the boys after her, to tell what size to get. Now you will go and get my hammer, he shouted. Tom, you bring me the rule. I shall want the stepladder, and I better have the kitchen stool too. Tim, you run round to Mr. Goggles and borrow his spirit level. Don't you go, Maria, because I shall want somebody to hold the light. When the girl comes back, she must go out again for a bit of picture cord. And Tom, where's Tom? Tom, you come here. I shall want you to hand me the picture. Then he lifted the picture and dropped it. It came out of the frame. He tried to save the glass and cut himself. Then he hopped around the room looking for his handkerchief. He couldn't find it because it was in the pocket of the coat he had taken off. But the problem was he did not know where he had put the coat. All the house had to stop looking for his tools and start looking for his coat. While they were doing so, he bullied them. know where my coat is? I never came across such a set of people in all my life. Upon my word, I didn't. So many of you, and you can't find a coat that I took off not five minutes ago. Then he got up and found that he had been sitting on it. You can give up, he called out. I found it myself. Might just as well ask the cat to find anything than expect you people to find it. When half an hour had been spent in tying up his finger and a new glass had to be brought as well as the tools, the ladder, the stool and the candle, he had another go. The whole family, including the girl and the charwoman, stood round in a semicircle ready to help. Two people had to hold the stool. A third helped and a fourth passed him up the hammer. He took hold of the nail and dropped it. There, he said in an injured tone, now the nail's gone. We all had to go down on our knees and hunt for it, while he stood on the stool and complained. I want to know, he said, if I am to be kept here all evening. The nail was found at last, but by that time he had lost the hammer. Where's the hammer? What did I do with the hammer? Great heavens! So many of you just hanging around here and you don't know what I did with the hammer? We found the hammer for him, but by then he had lost sight of the mark he had made on the wall where the nail was to go in. Each of us tried to help him, but to no avail. He used a bit of string trying to reach a point three inches beyond what was possible for him to reach. The string slipped and down he slid onto the piano, a really fine musical effect being produced by the suddenness with which his head and body struck all the notes at the same time. After almost an hour, Uncle Podger got the spot fixed again. He put the point of the nail on it with his left hand and took the hammer in his right hand. Then, with the first blow, he smashed his thumb and dropped the hammer onto somebody's toes.
the sigh and said, Next time I want to be told when Uncle Podger's going to drive a nail into the wall. I'll go and spend a weekend with my mother while it is being done. Oh, you women, you make such a fuss over everything, Uncle Podger said. I like doing a little job like this. About midnight, the picture was up. Very crooked and insecure, and everybody was tired and miserable, except Uncle Podger. There you are, he said, stepping heavily off the stool onto the charwoman's corns and surveying the mess he had made with pride. Why, some people would have paid a man to do a little thing like that. 